So uh, this is a complete full-fledged vehicle uh, diagnostics simulation center where I can uh, I have a petrol engine vehicle and I can interact with pretty much all the elements of an engine here. So all the sensors, actuators, wires you see here, you can interact with pretty much all these elements. So uh, I can remove these couplers, I can remove an injector, I can put it back, I can replace a new part. So uh, this kind of lets you play a diagnostics technician uh, in virtual reality, I mean, virtu I mean on the virtual reality. So um, my work order here states that uh, engine fault light uh, comes on and it's, it's giving me a, um, a small hint. It's asking me to compare the output of the injectors. So first step, let me go start my car, switch on the keys, this is the third setting, okay, crank and it's started and uh, let me connect my diagnostic system and find out if I have any error codes. Yep, it says uh, the O2 sensor circuit, no activity and system is too lean. So whenever you see um, these two codes together, especially if you see system too lean, um, then what it means is the ECU is trying to uh, adjust the fueling and uh, the injector is not responding to it. And uh, because of that, you frequently have these two error codes coming up together. Now let me just close it off. So now I need to check the injectors. I need to check all four injectors to make sure they're working fine. So one simple way of doing it, of course, would be to remove the injectors themselves and find if there's any change in engine noise. Um, yeah, engine noise has changed, which means injector one probably is working fine. Yeah, there is a change. So injector two is working fine as well. Change with injector three, change with injector four. So now this is going to be a little difficult because all four of your injectors are working. Um, but you're still getting uh, an error code in the diagnostic system saying the system is running too lean. So, I mean, uh, just uh, neglect these things. These error codes are coming up because you removed the injector couplers when you were, I mean, the engine was still running. So now these two things are still coming up, but all four of your injectors are still working. So now this, this what this means is this possibly an uh, electronic issue where uh, uh, one of the injectors is malfunctioning at times. So now you cannot take and connect a multimeter. You have a multimeter, but you cannot use a multimeter and do much diagnostics here because uh, the moment you measure voltages, uh, it's going to show you the battery voltage and uh, the supply voltage. It, it's not going to be uh, varying by much. So uh, in this case, the multimeter is not going to show you much of a difference. So the same, uh, more or less the same is what you're going to get. So the multimeter might not actually make much of a difference here. So what you need uh, to diagnose this kind of a system is an oscilloscope. So an oscilloscope is just a glorified multimeter uh, in the sense that uh, it's able to register the signals at a much faster levels and uh, it'll, it'll uh, store it and it'll show it to you graphically. So instead of just seeing <coughs> the... Uh, voltage uh, from the ECU as uh, static uh, voltage figure say 13.6 um, what can actually happen is you can take an oscilloscope and uh, connect it to the same pin and uh, you'll be able to see the pulses so you see the pulses here so uh, these are the pulses that come from the ECU you could hold and you could observe <coughs> so now uh, the funny thing with the pulse is that whenever the ECU is uh, uh, controlling the injector on, on, on the other side, uh, what happens is it's, a, it's supposed to supply a ground signal. So a ground signal meaning this is your ground level, zero. So now we are getting 13.6. So what it means is each division here is 5 volts. So 5, 10 and somewhere about 14 volts you are getting it here. So that's the supply voltage which is going. And every time the ECU has to switch on this injector, it has to drop the supply to zero. Zero is here. It has to drop it there. Only then um, the injector gets grounded completely. Um, if you need to check it out, you can go ahead and you can switch on the channel 2. So blue is the channel 2. 
let me connect it to an injector second injector and uh, let me hold both these things and uh, let me check so you see the blue line here so this is a zero volt uh, division it's 20 volts so it's probably here it's, it's about 13.3 and whereas with the red one you see um, it's not grounding completely so it's not grounded to the uh, absolute zero level it's still there is still some resistance here so there is some resistance between your uh, injector pin here and your ECU and that is what is causing your system to misbehave um, because when uh, you have not <coughs> you have not completely grounded your injector um, then you're going to have some variation in the voltage levels that's going to be uh, present here so now this is not something which you could uh, directly measure with any of these things uh, you need to go put a ECU probe here or, or a multimeter probe here and you need to check the resistances with the ECU so now I need to figure out to which pin on the ECU my injector 1 is connected. So uh, yep, this is injector 1, so the, uh, this is the engine control unit and this is injector 1. This is EGR valve, injector 1. So one pin is connected to your fuse and then to your main relay. And the other pin, other, other side of the pin, this is the color, it is connected to uh, pin level, pin 11 of the ECU. So now there is some resistance here between pin 2 and pin 11 and uh, that is causing the problems with our injector. So now if you need to measure the uh, resistance, you can't put a probe in here. Um, the uh, ideal way of doing it would be to use what is called as a breakout box. So a breakout box is nothing but, uh, so this is a breakout box. So what happens is you connect one end of the breakout box to the ECU okay and these signals go into the breakout box come out and they go into the wiring harness so now you have a way of uh, checking resistance between this pin and pin 11 of the ECU so it's easier for you to do you don't have to go um, you know probe or uh, cut open wires here it's, it's, it's a lot more easier so now to measure resistance I need to connect one end of the probe to the, uh, the pin the pin 2 of the injector and the other end to pin 11 of the ECU and switch it on to resistance. Ideally speaking this is supposed to read 0 ohms because uh, this connection is directly coming into pin 11 so ideal cases there is not supposed to be any resistance. If you need to check out if you are not very sure um, pin 12 is for injector number 2 so uh, you could go connect this to injector number in pin number 12 and uh, connect it to injector number 2 0 so there is not supposed to be any resistance between this pin here and your pin 11 so now we have identified your problem there is some problem between this blue wire which goes into the harness and goes here there is some problem with that maybe the wire is oxidized or maybe it is cut or, or something like that but um, ultimately what, what, what it means is that um, it has got some internal resistance and because of that um, your, your injector is not uh, connecting, it's not controlled properly. Let me put back the ECU coupler and uh, I need to replace the wiring. So to do that I need to open up my wiring diagram and this way you replace the wire. So now identify which wire it is that you need to replace. So between pin 2 and pin 11, so it is this wire. So now I can go click here and say replace this wire. So now it's put a new wire here. So uh, if you put a new wire then uh, ideal cases you're not supposed to have any resistance. Um, we can check it out. Um, let's go check it out anyways. Let me put the multimeter back and uh, one end on pin 2 and other on uh, pin 11. Okay, let me put it here and now let me measure my resistance 0. So I've sorted the problem. I've managed to fix the problem. So I've replaced the wire and now there is no resistance between my pin 2 and pin 11 here. So now start the car. The vehicle is idling at proper 1000 RPM. It used to run a little uh, higher earlier. Now that's gone. So open up my diagnostic system. Um, erase the fault code once and... Uh, go back and recheck it just to be doubly sure 
yes i have no error codes meaning my uh, uh, work is completely done so now my work here is done so as a technician my work is done so i can go back to the work order and i can um, say the failure to resolve vehicle is ready to go and documented work is performed return to customer of course it says parts that were not faulty have been replaced or removed that's because i was removing the coupler so but that you could uh, neglect and uh, you could also go check the invoice it's all in pounds because this is a uh, i mean uh, the the servers are based in the uk so it's all showing in pounds but you could understand so you did an obd scan for which uh, 30 pounds has been charged connectors and troubleshooting time and the additional labor time. So this is the time you took for uh, every time you go replace a wire or you click something here, then internally it is being calculated. I mean, it calculates the labor time. So now to solve this problem, you have charged or you should charge the customer somewhere close to 10,000 rupees. So this is how you can use a virtual diagnostic simulator to teach your students uh, the art of uh, automotive diagnostics and troubleshooting. Thank you.